Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a studio tour of my new studio, I guess. Uh, it's just a room at the apartment where I'm living now. I have cleaned it and decorated it, but not everything is super tidy. So for some reason I thought it would be a great idea to record this video right after lunch in a, very, in a very hot day as well, so I'm very sluggish and sleepy. Let's start by this area by the door. This is the wall that connects the door to the door, to the balcony. So it's great, I have a lot of light, but it's also very hot in the summer. So let's begin with the IKEA cart next to the door. Everyone organizes theirs differently and I'd like to have mine looking better but I guess it is what it is for now. I will probably reorganize this many times. But right now in here I have, there's like a ruler in here, the brushes I've been using, the pencils I've been using, a stapler that I don't know where to store, white and black and white gouache the most used inks water thing down here this has post-it notes ink like eco line and fountain pen inks here i have some stamp pads and some printmaking things like the black ink is in here here are like Pencils, pens, I think a few post-its and a few other things that don't have a place yet. And down here it's... These are watercolor pencils. This, these are pro markers. And basically it's miscellaneous stuff. I don't really know everything that's in here. It's not a very useful card right now because I don't take full advantage of the fact that it moves to keep things that I need everywhere, so... Next, there's this beautiful desk that was from my great-grandmother's house. This is my desk now. <laughs> yeah, and then here are like a desk easel. This one is um, to protect the table when I'm doing linoleum, lino cut. And then this one, I think it is a kitchen book holder thing. This is um, the drawer of doom. So let's close it down again. <laughs> this is more miscellaneous things. Now, on top of the desk, this is the most recent addi addition to my plant family. This one is a Pilea. This is a fern that I managed to replicate, multiplicate, reproduce, I don't know, from another one I have on the other bigger snail. <laughs> You'll see later. And then this one my mom gave me, this spider plant my mom gave me, and this peace lily, my dad gave me two of those. When I moved here, I've been ignoring this, but this is a project from an upcoming video because I need more fire under my butt, like this one was not enough fire under my butt. So yeah, door to the balcony. This was the biggest bargain I ever, ever bought. This is an A0 archive and it only cost like a hundred euros. Usually, these things, when they are new, cost like a thousand euros. Yeah, and it was pretty much new. The owner had never used it and she, basically, she didn't need the money. She just knew how much they cost and thought they were way too expensive. So, when she decided to sell it, she decided to sell it very cheap because she doesn't believe they are worth a thousand euros. The 
first drawer counting from the bottom is where I keep uh, these big cardboard sheets and then I have a three things that don't fit anywhere else here these ones are 50 by 70 centimeters so they are half of the big sheets of paper and I keep them here because again they don't fit anywhere else so yeah I guess this is where I keep some fancy paper <laughs> is this even interesting to you oh yeah fancy unopened paper I shouldn't be keeping it here like this but I guess that's what I can do right now and this is the paper that I taped to the wall Okay, so second to last drawer, I have some more A3 stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else. And here are the cloth, like tablecloth things I've been using for filming the, this past, I, I don't know, two years, one year and a half paper bits, because I do not throw away good paper I use it for other things, like other prints or mini prints or micro prints that leaves us with these things here on this corner there's my already charged battery for the camera there I have so it is where I keep some paper blocks and things I guess <laughs> and that's my old lamp it's not that old but it was the one I used at my mom's place this one has my watercolor palettes this one has all the cups I guess where I can put water while painting this wine box has my brayers for printing linoleum this wine box has all my sketchbooks that are either in use or empty then on this space there are a few ceramic dishes that I use as palettes and my gouache palettes here I have I think all my acrylic paint and paper tape and bright orange tape and these ones are leads for boxes that I've been using without leads so I use these as trays so right now I managed to clear the top of this thing that I meant to use like a workbench below this is the mess paper and then like the middle block has old things the block back there has A3 things that I don't need to access often this block here has used sketchbooks and then this is the toolbox where I keep everything printmaking related that fits in there these are things I still need to go through miscellaneous cardboard and this is where I keep most pieces of paper that are below the size of A4 this is where I keep the press this is an old like sewing machine mechanism it still works but there is no sewing machine on it so I brought it back from my grandf grandfather's garage this printing press was also there, but it belonged to another one of my great-grandfathers, so here are some special things. These two are prints by good friends of mine. This is a silkscreen print of hers, and I really like her stuff. Her name is Diana, or Pimentina. <laughs> I'll link her website and her gumroad below. 
Um, and this one is by is a um, zinc plate etch print etching print. I don't know how to say that in English, but it is really cool. It matches the colors of the studio. <laughs> so I, this one I know I'm going to hang up here. I will also link her Instagram. I don't know if she has another website, but I'm going to link her Instagram down below. So these are some cheap frames from Ikea that I don't know where to hang yet. And those were all in my bedroom at my mom's place. Starting from the bottom again. This one is pretty empty. Just a couple of pallets. This one has many things I don't use often. Then here I have all the brushes that are synthetic, not expensive, and can be damaged if needed, and it's okay. Here are some empty pallets and the rest of my gouache tube. And then oh, on the top I have some very old pallets and some, you know, watercolor um, pallets and tubes. This is where I keep all the tubes that I... Then we reach the shelf. The part of the studio that I'm the most proud of decorating. I'm gonna start from the, the bottom up. I got some more wine boxes. The ones down here, these two, are the ones I access the most. And back down here I have pencil shavings and candles from when I'm recording stuff around autumn and winter. And some... This is camellia oil, which I use to sharpen my gouges and linoleum and wood tools. This is thread that I use for sewing sketchbooks together. Then I have the business cards, washi tape and similar stuff. Some miscellaneous papers. This is my watercolor recipe book. And then back here, this is colorful thread from when I'm mending things. And that's some more arches paper. So here is the camera stuff. This is the camera bag. And then I keep in here like bits that I need to be to have close to me. The magic arm. This is just like an arm to hold your phone somewhere. Uh, this is where I keep most of the tiny bits. Microphone, dead cat thing. And then the mini tripod would be down there. Okay. So this is more miscellaneous stuff. I have I don't remember what I put in there. And this box has gardening gloves, some Christmas decorations like a scarf and a bouncy ball, and more things I don't remember. I have many miscellaneous places to hide messy things. Let's move on to the drawers because yes, the bottom drawer has some rulers. Um, these ones have shapes and stuff. I don't know the name of it in English, but I guess you can read it in German if you know how to speak German. And then these are notebooks or sketchbooks to be more precise that I'm going to print stuff on the cover so that I can sell at my shop. And then this is a sketchbook I've been using for printmaking projects, like bigger ones. And then down here there's linoleum, like grey and brown linoleum. Also these are very hard to open and close with one hand. Okay, 
this is more I think it is also called tissue paper even though you don't use it to blow your nose I use these ones to separate fresh prints these rollers my mom gave them to me I don't know what they are for um, I'd like to display them because they are pretty but I don't know how I also keep in here some jinko leaves that are very dry I have in here also like ink tests and color tests to check if it looks good on the paper that, I've, that I'm going to use it on and here are some prints then there are more prints there and more prints there and more prints there so this is basically the drawer where I keep most of the prints that fit in here not all of the ones that fit in here so yeah here I keep basically like the stamps or equivalent to stamps that result from Linocut and then this one is a um, zinc plate that is already etched and I have already printed with um, so yeah, I have all the plates and lino blocks and things that are carved or, pr or already printed or not. But the carved or etched blocks are all in here so far. Because once I do bigger stuff, I'll need a bigger drawer. Okay. Okay, moving on from the drawers up. Here's the fern on my favorite snail. Is it focused? No. Okay. An old box full of memories and little tiny treasures and photographs. And a book. A tiny toy, I don't know where it came from. Another piece lily that my dad gave me. And one of my favorite art books from a Ghibli movie. Then moving up. More books on girls through anime and Iraville's book and Mateo Zurbanovic's book and printmaking book and then books from my great grandfather. More books that were his. My grandmother gave me this box with a clock inside, but the clock is broken, so this is a mini. Uh, writing machine. It is a Hermes baby and I find it really cute. Another snail and I think this is a variegated potus plant but I'm not sure. My mom gave it to me and it is cute and it is thriving here so I'm glad about that. Anyway, more books photographs and another snail with sorry if it is shaky but <laughs> it's getting very high um, this snail uh, has a lavender blossom I think there and then I'm propagating this beautiful monstrosity of a fern that I love so yeah Moving on, I'm going to go down on this shelf. I love, I think lady hair ferns is the name of this type of plant. Even though I forgot to water it several times, sorry. Uh, it's thriving, thriving, thriving. I don't know how to say it, but yeah, and I'm really happy. I really like that plant. I got it for less than a euro. Uh, there is where I keep the snowball microphone because I don't know that thing has some leftover fabric and these two books are in French I can't can't read them and they are about anatomy they are from the 1930s or 20s I think from when my great-grandfather was studying medicine, so more of my favorite books. This one is by the same guys who made The Adventures of Dog Mendonça and Pizza Boy. Uh, this or... yeah. 
They are Philippe Meldo and Juan Cavia, and I love both their art and their book, their stories. Uh, so I love their books. <laughs> uh, this is a guide on birds, like specifically, I think, European birds. And then this is about color, obviously. This is about plants. And I don't know what this book... Oi. I don't know what this book is, but I, I liked the cover, so I bought it. You know, red hot chili peppers. And then Head Cleaners is my father's old... my dad's old band. Um, they're not together anymore, but I like the CD anyway. And yes, the CD player is not in this room, but I didn't know where else to put the CDs. And this is a Bob Marley cassette that I think my dad bought back when he was in Taiwan working. This is a type of fern that I have zero idea about the name, but it is really pretty, so I really like it. Then this is a very old painter's box from the same great-grandfather as the writing machine, the books, and the anatomy books. He was a very interesting man that I would like to have met. This is a pencil sharpener that doesn't work as such anymore, but it is a really cute globe. <laughs> this is a birthday party invitation from more than 10 years ago, but I thought it was cute, so I kept it as decoration since, like, second grade or something. Calatia orbifolia, one of my most happy plants, I think. She loves the spot. She has a new leaf here. She has, I think, two more there. I don't know if you can even see that. There's another one there. And there's another one here. So, she loves this place. She gave me two brand new leaves when we got here. And then now she has three new leaf rolls. So, she cute. And she's thriving. I don't know why, but these plants love this place. This rock looks like a gorilla. And for some reason, I bought this book secondhand, I think two years ago. And it's a really nice photography book. This is my sewing box. Extra more books that I love. And then this thing is not sorted yet, but... More books here, another plant that I'm propagating, and that was a gift from my uncle. These pens belonged to my grandmother, and she doesn't use them any anymore, so she gave them to me. Pretty tin. Pretty tin, where I keep smelly printmaking stuff, and like metal cleaning products. More books and an Etch-a-Sketch that I played with a few weeks ago. Now down here, don't worry, we're almost done. I don't know if this is boring or not, but I usually love to watch this kind of video, but I'm not feeling very energetic today, sorry. This is a bit smelly here because this bag has smelly rags. This is the one synthetic, which it's I don't know what it is, but it, the name in English, but it's to remove dilute paint or dilute other stuff, like wood varnish and stuff, and it stinks. And it's very flammable, that's why it's inside here. That's like paste to cover holes on walls. Miscellaneous papers, scrapbook papers, newspapers more newspapers, more tissue paper for the prints. This is a DIY light that I need some hot glue to keep together. It's still not finished. Cotton rag, a new one. These are old shower curtains that I use as diffusers for lights. A fabric that is left over from giving a new look to the chair I've been using here. And then these are just some papers. 
and a piece of wood that I don't know what to do with yet. And lastly, behind the door, extension cord, uh, the leftover from paper packaging, an apron and an easel. So I hope you enjoyed this look around my space and I hope it was interesting to you. I still have two drawers at my mom's house with more stuff that should be kept here and I have a few drawers in the office so like the room next to this one where the computers are I still have a couple drawers there with stuff that should come here but now it's not the time to worry about that if I ever do like a studio makeover or an office makeover or something I will have to tidy those things up I guess <sighs> oh. Thank you very much for watching. I know this video is late again. I've been really enjoying the studio and it's really nice to have at least free service surfaces, horizontal surfaces, so that I can paint and work and do stuff here. But yeah, it has been really nice to be here and I hope even though I feel very sleepy and sluggish while recording this video, I hope it was interesting and I hope I hope you can feel how happy I feel how happy I feel to be here. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next week. I hope to see you many weeks from now again. I hope to keep seeing you every week if I keep posting every week because I hope I keep posting every week. Oh, I'm sleepy. I just want to take a nap. It's very hot today. See ya.